If they fire me here and it was unjust, God will open a door over here. If it closes here, he will open a door here. For he is the source and he has all the resources. So there's no sense me worrying. Oh, I can. But Jesus said, what does it profit you? What good is it? Is it going to change anything? Is it, is it going to add to your life? No. Then stop it. Go look at the raven. What I want you to do if you keep worrying Go out in the backyard and holler for ravens to come. Specifically, a mama raven. Cry out for a mama raven and have her tell you the story of their great-great-granddaddy and what he did with Noah and the ark and how he fed Elijah. Because the ravens know where the food comes from. And so Jesus just says, disciples, don't worry. Look at the ravens. Jesus knew the history of the ravens. Jesus knew how God had used them to feed his children. Look at the ravens. Unlimited resources. I want to close by reading you Deuteronomy from the book of Deuteronomy. If you turn with me to chapter 8. I'm going to let you read the first, oh, let's say 16 verses for homework, okay? That's your homework. I want to read verse 17. Six, I'll read 16, 17, and 18 with you. But understand, this is part of the covenant, meaning God wants to be in contract. I, I want you to get this. God wants to enter into contract with you that he becomes your divine provider exclusively. You've just got to enter into that contract with him. Or you can continue worrying. Now, the first six, 15 and a half verses talk about the children of Israel, about how he, they walked through the wilderness, how God taught them and, and how he's teaching them. He's saying, follow my commands, my regulations. I'll be with you. But let's pick up with verse 16. He fed you with manna in the wilderness of food unknown to your ancestors. He did this to humble you and test you for your own good. He did this so you would never say to yourself, I have achieved this wealth with my own strength and energy. Remember the Lord your God. He is the one who gives you power to be successful. Now look at this last part. In order to fulfill the covenant, he confirmed to your ancestors with an oath. Those last three verses need to be tattooed on our forehead. He is saying, never say to yourself, look at what I have done. Look at how good my employer has been to me. Look at how good we have done. Never forget that the source is your God. He is the one that has given you that there would never have been an employer if there never was a God. Because they would have never had blocks for dust and delay to build a factory. There would have never been ore in the ground for them to harvest to get the iron to make the product that they're making. There would have never been the beauty of nature for them to extract to make paint so they could paint the product. There would have never been the brains given to humanity to figure out how to build a computer that you operate. Without God, there is nothing. It all begins with him and it ends with him. He is the source and the source is saying, I want to go into contract with you through the covenant that I promised to Abraham that makes you, that is available to you because you were born again as sons and daughters of Jesus Christ. You're also sons and daughters of Abraham and I'm extending a contract to you to become your divine provider. Will you accept it? Or do you want to just keep going on down the road you're going? It's up to you. But, but God Almighty said, I've got a contract on the table. I have, I have entered into this contract with an oath. Now, it'd take me too long to tell you about the oath, but you can go read about how Abraham and God. So, divine provision via the contract from God equals, I don't have to worry. I've shared with some of you before my story, and Bobby shared his this morning, and I'm, I want to close with 
sharing my story as a testimony, as a testimony of God's faithfulness. It was seven years ago this month that I signed the document that ended my contract with Unum. They wanted me to move outside of Boston to a town called Worcester, Massachusetts. And we were building a brand new facility there. I would have a corner office on the top floor and would be over this division. And, and man, it was lucrative and it was nice. But God had a little place called Rock Point. And at the time, I had a nice six-figure income. The benefits were out the roof. Everything. I mean, everything. More than I could imagine had a bonus program on top of that that I got part of the bonuses that every employee got but as an officer with the company I also got officer bonuses which were deferred retirement it was massive I found out that if I voluntarily left the company that I was gonna lose all of the deferred retirement that I had collected so far and anything in the future and that was considerable I was looking at the time at an 80% pay cut with no benefits and my wife had the wild idea the year before that she's going to quit school and go to work, or go to school. She never got her letterman jacket at college, and she wanted to go do that. Insanity 101. She quits a good job. I'm thinking about stepping down as, a, as an officer with a Fortune 200 company. I'm going to take an 80% pay cut just on base pay. Forget the benefits and the bonus on top of that. But look at the Ravens. It's been seven years since I signed that paper that I wasn't going to stay with the company. And God has been more than faithful. I'll be honest with you, when I left Unum, I was confused. Unum had been very good to me in the 17 years I'd been there. Very good to me. But I was confused. I thought Unum was the source. How could you live without medical benefits? I wouldn't have any medical benefits. My wife's in school and I didn't have any here. How can you do that? So I had all these, I grid everything out. I was an Excel guru at the time and my boss would give me numbers and charts and everything in Excel and then drop those into PowerPoint so that the Excel documents were still active and do a presentation and I, you can make numbers say anything I learned, but, but I had a grid. God, I, I, I can't do this. I mean, what if I get sick? What am I going to do? I did the Obamacare the first year, and I'm not knocking any president, but for what was $900 insurance without Obamacare went up to $1,700 a month. And then I found out I got a bill at the end of the year for the tax credit, and I ended up having to pay taxes on the other nine grand that was a tax benefit that I didn't have that money either I had to put another four grand to that to pay God what is this what are you doing look at the records God then impressed upon the leadership team to up my pay a little bit here that was a blessing my wife finally graduated and got her education got back to work and that was a blessing but what God has taught me He's the source. You guys could fire me tomorrow. You may fire the resource of my income today. Nobody can fire my source. God may close one door, and, and I could go tomorrow, tonight and begin to worry and go, God, where am I going to go? Let me get my rock. Where am I going? I need a big one. Where am I going to go? And you know what God's going to say? Look at the ravens. They don't worry. Why? Because the ravens have a heritage that has proven what their creator is capable of doing. And some of us simply need to look back upon our heritage of what God has done in the past. And sometimes we need to go, what am I going to do? 
let me look at what God has done in the past, what he has brought me through, the, the, the times that he stepped up and was there for me. Why am I worried? Because nobody, nobody can get rid of my source. Nobody can separate me from the love of Christ. Demons hire demons. Pink slips, yellow slips, no slips. Income, no income, no job. My God can take care of it, and he wants to. But it don't work as long as we have worry rocks. All right, you got your worry rocks. We've got so many worry rocks out there, I don't know how we're going to do this because I wasn't anticipating this. I want you to look at 1 Peter chapter 5. 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 7. Jeff, I want you to come to the, to the keyboard, if you will, and just play softly. We're going to close with prayer. These worry rocks that I've given you, they work. I guarantee they work. I guarantee they work. You put them in your pocket, and if you hold them in worry, they make worry go away. Does that make any sense? No. There's some of you, if I said it enough, you'd believe it. With your rock going, oh, let me just put them all right here. Maybe it'll really help. Because guys, we want to stop. We want to stop worrying. We, we want freedom. We want to live. But we're so used to doing it ourselves we're so used to looking at a spreadsheet to determine if God has told us to go do something. Several times in Nancy and I's life, I could tell you where the spreadsheet said, don't go, be a dove, turn and run back to the boat. But God saying, go be a raven. You fly, I'll give you the strength. I've got a land out there ready for you. You don't have to wait seven days like the dove. Let me be your strength. But Father, the spreadsheet says I can only fly 54 feet. And I'm now 56 feet from the ark. What am I going to do? I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Can't you hear the little raven flapping his wings? He's now been 100 miles. I'm not going back to the ark. I've got a calling for something better. I'm determined that my creator can carry me. And he gets his strength. And he's flapping and he's looking. And he don't see land anywhere. But he don't give up. He don't pause on the water and begin to worry about can he swim. He don't enroll in swimming lessons as a backup plan. He don't have a life jacket on in case he fails. He is determined that his creator will either carry him through just destined to let it go. Do you get what Jesus is saying? Look at the ravens. Look at how cool they are. They are so cool that I, I call them to bring food from heaven. Nancy, tomorrow birds may just bring cash into the house. If on the back deck you see a bird with a hundred dollar bill, don't shoot the bird. Bring it on in the house. You say, God can't do that. If God can put T-bone steak in the mouth of a raven and take it to Elijah that's sitting by a brook. Don't tell me. There is no limits to what my God can do. You're only limited by your own lack of faith. My God could bring $100 bills out of the air if he wanted to. He could. Why don't he? We don't need it right now. The air is much better than the money. You can't spend it in here anyway. Unless you want to buy a rock. Look at this verse, 1 Peter 5, 7. Give all your worries and cares to who? God. Why? For he cares about you. You were never designed to be a worry ward. It was never part of God's plan for you to spend one moment's energy worrying. Here's how the worry rock works. You have to make a decision. Am I going to carry my worry rock with me? Or am I willing to say, I give it to you, God? The only way the worry rock works is you got to let it go. 
I don't want you to let it go if you're not ready to quit worrying. If you've got a place in your home that is your dedicated worry room, you take that rock with you. You take it home. You keep it until you're ready to release it. But I'm going to have prayer this morning. And there may be some people that says, I'm tired of worrying. I'm tired of it. I'm tired of it. I want to get in contract, in covenant with my divine provider. That is promised, he's got my back. He's got me covered. I don't have to keep doing this. After all, I've done wore a hole through the carpet. Worry words. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to have prayer. Jeff's going to play. If you want to give your worry rock to Jesus, I want you to bring it up here and put it in the basket. If you want to take it home and think about it, you take it home and think about it. It's up to you. Let's have prayer. Heavenly Father, there's really nothing in this prayer, Father, that I can say that hadn't already been said except to say, I acknowledge you are the King of all kings and Lord of all lords. We believe you are the creator of the universe, that by your spoken word, the sea was created, the mountains formed, the sun was put into motion. Tomorrow when the eclipse occurs, it's part of your divine plan. You could stop it at this moment. We'd all look like fools waiting to see it if you wanted to. You are the God of the heavens and the God of this universe. You are the source of everything that we have. Everything, our home, our cars, the food that we eat, the jobs, it has been given from you and we thank you for it. Father God, somehow in our blessed nation, we have carved out our own way and we haven't learned how to trust you. We thank you for our nation, Father. We thank you that your hand has been upon the nation of America. We thank you that we have a bounty of food and and the economy is good and our homes keep keep us warm in the winter and cool in the summer. But they've made us just a little bit soft like the doves. We run back to the safety of what we know, that vessel of the ark, too quick. When there is something out there that you're trying to show us, would you help us to look at the ravens and see the tenacity of a raven and see the dependency that a raven has upon you to see, God, their heritage of how you have used them down the ages to take care of even your children. You had a bird feed your children. God, may we trust you. Now, Father's an act of faith. As an act of faith, we're going to pray that you'd guide us. Is it time for us to give our worries to you? We mean it, Father. We want our faith to be solely in you. We want to trust you. We want to enter in divine contract with you as part of the covenant. Would you strengthen us, God, by your hand? Would you remind us that your resources are unlimited? And God, I pray for the children at Rock Point that worry would disseminate because the power of God would manifest himself so strongly through the Holy Spirit that we would believe that God, you are who you say you are. We ask these things in Christ's name. Amen. As Jeff plays or sings, whatever the Holy Spirit leads him to do, if you want to come and give your worry rock to God, you come and do it. My re-